really come from a, a background where uh, the city is actually more important than uh, the state or any uh, other authority. Um, now, I, I have studied uh, urban geography, I have studied uh, planning in uh, the city of uh, Ghent. I really developed uh, my planning career always with the city on my mind, um, but in, in, in a broader, in a broader uh, context. Um, I started looking also at uh, systems of cities, how cities relate to each other. Um, the problem is that many cities and municipalities might do a great job on their own, but basically they are actually developing uh, a policy against the neighboring city. They try to catch as much as possible functions that another city could uh, develop better. Um, so from that uh, idea of complementarity, I started a bit my, my, my planning career, uh, looking at systems of cities, looking at how cities relate with their ecosystems, uh, how cities are connected by infrastructure. Uh, of course, not only about uh, highways, but more and more by trains, uh, uh, by light rail. Um, if you look at cities now in, in the north of Belgium, um, the four or five cities that are well connected become like one city. Um, the trains uh, in between the cities become like a metro. Um, the distance between cities is still like 50 kilometers, but in time it's only 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, you are now faster between the centers of two cities than coming from the suburbs to the city, which I think is a great uh, victory over all these uh, suburbanizers. Um, so in a way, uh, planning can really make that difference by providing the right infrastructure, the right decisions uh, to make that uh, shift going, uh, to really uh, create uh, attractive places in the city for all kinds of groups. Always looking at uh, crossing, crossing boundaries, uh, uh, linking, connecting, um, opening up ideas, uh, uh, being innovative. The whole rural-urban continuum is actually what we have to look at. It's uh, integrated territorial planning. It sounds a bit uh, abstract and theoretical, but if you put all the, the elements together, uh, it should make sense. Um, the rural should support uh, the urban and vice versa. When I give uh, planning courses or I undertake uh, visioning workshops with communities, I did 12 of them in Kosovo. Uh, I also undertook a lot of these uh, uh, community visioning uh, workshops in Palestine. We, we always try to unpack all these uh, complicated uh, layers um, and it's, it's amazing how much, how much uh, knowledge there is within the people uh, to, to develop their own vision. Yeah? So participation has also been a very important uh, component in, in my work. Um, not as planner coming there and saying, you know, I have studied for uh, 10 years, I know what to do. I need a bit of your feedback, some consultation, and uh, we can finalize the plan. No, it's coming there with an open blanket uh, page and say, let's do this together, you know. Uh, it's, it's your city, it's your uh, village. Um, you can put your ideas, but I will reflect on your ideas uh, from a perspective of sustainability, if they make sense, uh, if uh, they do not internally conflict. A platform uh, for uh, multi-stakeholder discussion, um, uh, about listening to each uh, other's arguments, uh, about picking elements from, every, from everybody and try to make a very interesting localized uh, mix, uh, cocktail of all this in what we then call a plan, an action plan, uh, a strategy, whatever you call it. You know? So uh, for me this is, this is the basis of, uh, of, of good planning. This is what we promote also through the international uh, guidelines on urban and territorial planning, um, which is a very good basis and relates very good uh, to the World Urban Campaign, the, um, the 10 principles uh, for the city we need. Uh, it's really about uh, uh, integrative thinking, inclusive thinking. Um, it's about uh, uh, public participation, uh, but in a very serious way, not consultation, but civic involvement. Um, with uh, involvement also of vulnerable groups, uh, very often women, youth, elderly are completely excluded from those uh, uh, discussions uh, and it's our task uh, to make sure that all groups are around the table or at least uh, have their uh, say into this um, big fight for uh, a better uh, living environment. 
So I'm very happy also to be uh, on a new uh, assignment, uh, which uh, I see a bit like like a, a kind of cherry on on the tart uh, of uh, many years of uh, planning uh, professional experience, uh, which is is uh, drafting a handbook for the international guidelines uh, on urban and territorial planning. Now that's a that's a mouthful. Uh, the document uh, looks like this. It's it's quite quite compact. It's a very short, sweet document of uh, uh, less than 40 pages. Um, it has something like 12 guiding principles and 113 recommendations for uh, governmental and non-governmental actors in planning. Basically everyone, you know, also civil society, planning professionals, national governments uh, and, um, and uh, local, local authorities. Um, now, my task, and really honored, honored to, to, uh, to take this forward, is, is uh, to develop a, a guideline for the guideline, how to apply them, uh, how to adjust your, your, your planning system um, to, let's say, the principles you, you advocate through the city we need, the principles we advocate uh, in this document, uh, so to get our cities more compact, more inclusive, uh, more, uh, more cohesive, uh, all these uh, big words to unpack uh, these things uh, into practical recommendations uh, how to do it by whom and uh, through a kind of partnership yeah nobody can do it uh, on its own the time that uh, you have a top-down master planning approach by government is over yes we should bury this uh, in Quito you know when there is the uh, Habitat 3 meeting there should be a kind of uh, uh, symbolic uh, burial of uh, the old top-down uh, old school uh, master planning and say it's time for a new approach. The new approach is partnership, the new approach is uh, uh, doing this together. But look at the gaps uh, in our current planning systems, whether it is uh, using old plans, outdated plans, uh, outdated uh, planning uh, uh, approaches, or whether it's in the legal system, you know, laws and regulations, or it is in the disconnection between planning and financement, um, or it is in the lack of cooperation between the different uh, departments of the ministries or departments uh, within the municipality. Um, so all these issues have to be addressed and uh, we're now working on a kind of self-assessment tool that countries uh, can actually um, apply these guidelines through a kind of checklist of where are we, you know. Um, every system will have its flaws, you know, because it's sometimes based on a system that worked maybe uh, 40 years ago, but uh, times have changed, you know, so also plans and uh, regulations should change. Yeah? Um, laws should be more spatially, spatially connected. A law can be different for a city or for um, a rural area. doesn't have to be the same law. Now, in most cases, it is the same law, right? So this is certainly a field where you could go into uh, uh, practical recommendations how to adjust your legal system uh, towards a more uh, responsive uh, planning system for the needs of people in cities or in rural areas uh, uh, which are very different. So um, I really hope that we will uh, be able to present those uh, guidelines uh, which is already integrated in the draft proposal of the new urban agenda. Uh, but we hope to launch the handbook in uh, Quito um, together actually with, with the, let's say, promoting the World Urban Campaign. So I really hope it will be also part of the World Urban Campaign.